I'm Em, and welcome and welcome back to the Nate York Wall. As I'm sure everybody knows, new patterns abound in the knitting community. I feel like every week I'm discovering a new pattern that I want to knit, and my Ravelry favorites lineup is insanely long, especially for that reason. So today I thought it would be fun to highlight some of my favorite patterns that I keep returning to over and over again, give them a little extra love, and hopefully inspire you to try some of these ones out as well. So I have um, kind of a very broad um, checklist for <laughs> the patterns that I'm going to share with you. First and foremost, it has to be a pattern that I really, really enjoyed knitting. The process was great. The pattern was clear. Um, I love the overall design or the fit. All of that goes into consideration there. And that is the primary uh, aspect for me as like what makes a favorite pattern. And then below that, it branches off into two subcategories. One is patterns that I've knit over and 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 over again, <laughs> which there's quite a handful actually. And then um, the other category is um, patterns that I loved and want to knit more of, but just haven't gotten around to yet. And there's actually only one, and I will explain the reasoning behind that <laughs> later on in the video. With that though, let's get started. I'm gonna start us off with an accessory here. Um, let me just organize them in my hands. These are the Hermione socks, maybe the Hermione Everyday socks. It'll be up on the screen. <laughs> Definitely should have double checked on that title. Um, these are the Hermione socks. They are some of my most worn socks in my collection. Uh, they just fit my feet really, really well. Um, I've knit a total of three of these two for myself and one was a gift knit. Let me pull this up here for you to see. It's got a really beautiful, simple texture to it with an eye of partridge heel. Apologies for any fluffs or pilling. <laughs> These have come straight out of the wash because again, I wear them a lot. Um, I love this texture. It's very intuitive once you get into it, but it also doesn't obscure the beauty of a hand dyed yarn. You can still see all of the speckling, all of the variegation in the hand dyed yarn shining through that texture. And I really love it. Um, again, it just fits my foot really well and it's super intuitive and it's a little more elevated than just a plain vanilla sock which i love a vanilla sock don't get me wrong but sometimes i just need a little you know add a little spice as the tiktok sound goes and this is perfect for that it's still super mindless but it's very very potato chippy with that texture and i just love the finished look and feel of these socks um I definitely see myself coming back to these ones again sometime soon because again I just love that texture and they fit me really well. All right next up. <laughs> Don't hate me for this. I know I've talked about this ad nauseum in previous videos. The North Shore beanie had to make it onto this list okay? Okay I have knit 12 of these. 12! North Shore beanies, and I'm including the classic North Shore beanie and the North Shore beanie worsted all into one racket. Uh, that just makes sense in my brain because it's a two for one pattern. Um, there's a link to it on Ravelry in the description below. Um, but yeah, I've had 12 of these and only four of them were for myself. The rest were gift knits. Um, I, I know I talk about this all the time and I know it's super biased because it's my own pattern, but I really do, I just love knitting it. It's two by two rib, it's meditative, it's super customizable. Even just with like the yarns that you can put together, especially making the worsted one, like I held a, it was categorized as a fingering weight, but I think it was more of a lace weight. I held that triple. Imagine what you could do with like marling if you held three different yarns together for the worsted weight. Oh. 
Maybe I have to cast that on. No, I have so many. <laughs> I literally have to stop myself from casting on more of these because I just love them so much. I love knitting them and I love how they fit my head. And everybody I've knit one for has loved it as well. Um, they're great. They honestly, they're my favorite hat and they're my favorite hat for a reason. And I hope that if you guys try it, you love it as much as I do. I'm actually very proud of myself for coming up with this pattern. Um, it was very early on in my designing days um, and it holds a lot of really happy memories for me um, and lots of senses of accomplishment as well. Um, I am also thinking on the note of knitting more North Shore beanies, um, how would we feel about a little giveaway with some fun prizes? Maybe in the fall? North Shore Beanie Knit Along? Let me know if you'd be interested, leave a comment because I think it could be really fun and I would love to see all of the colors and yarn combos that you all picked as well. So leave a comment, let me know. Next up is one of my most knit garments. I have knit a total of six of these and it is the, oh, hold on, there's some cat hair. There we go. It's the Ripple Bralette. Um, again, I've knit six of these, three were for myself, three have been gift knits. Um, Jessie Mae's patterns are so well written and easy to follow. They really are perfect for a beginner getting into garment knitting. Um, and the outcome of this little bralette is so good every single time. <laughs> like I said, I've knit many of these um, in different sizes and I love that you can um, extend or shorten the body as much as you want because then you can use up all of your scraps. So if you only have a certain amount of a scrap yarn, you can make it a little shorter or you can knit it a little longer to use up all of that scrap yarn, or you could do what I did, which was make a fade. This is four different yarns. Um, actually, all of the yarns that are in this bralette are in other projects in this video. Let's see if you can clock them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a really pretty, very basic pattern with really clear instructions. And again, because you can use up leftover yarn. I constantly reach for this one. And um, I'm actually planning to go through my yarn scraps this summer and see if I can make another fade because I just love it. I think I'd extend it a little bit more so I can wear it as a top um, during the summer because <laughs> this one is just a little bit short. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm pretty pale and my <laughs> dummy doesn't get a lot of sun. So in the middle of summer, if I wear something a little too cropped, I definitely blind people with the, the reflection off my skin. So <laughs> if I make another fade one, I think I'll extend the body um, and make it into slightly longer cropped tank top uh, to wear in the summer. Um, I really recommend it. It's just a great solid pattern. Okay, moving on from smaller projects, let's talk about a couple of shawls. First one that I have here is all about that brioche. And it is a, oh, let me re <laughs> lean back a little. It's a beautiful brioche and garter stitch shawl. I'll bring it a little closer now. Two color brioche stripes and then garter triangles on either side. This is the perfect pattern if you're looking to uh, get an introduction to two color brioche because they're pretty short um, sections and the instructions were really helpful in figuring out this new skill. Um, I also love this shawl because it knits up really quickly. Um, with the garter stitch, it's just kind of mindless. And then in the best way, I, I feel like I should clarify this. Um, when I say mindless knit, I really mean it in the best way possible. Like it's something that you can just work on without having to focus. It's the perfect thing to keep your hands busy while you're doing other things, or when you just need a moment of quiet to shut your brain down. 
So when I say it's mindless knit, that is like one of the highest forms of praise, I think. Um, and the increases and decreases are super intuitive on this shawl. So it is really one that you can throw in your bag and bring around um, while you go about your day. It's perfect for movie nights, like anything like that. And I love it too because how quickly it works up makes it the perfect gift knit. And I have knit six of these and only one was for myself, only this one. All the rest, all the other five shawls have been given to other people and um, I think they make the perfect gift because you can't go wrong with this. Like pick two colors that you like together and the result is a beautiful, plump, squishy, warm shawl. And everybody that I've ever knit one for has just been in love with it. And for that reason, I know that this is gonna be a shawl that I continue to go back for again and again. It's a great pattern, it's well written, and um, I also like that you can really push the yarn <laughs> to the end of the limit. Like the pattern describes like knit until you have half a cake left and then move on to the next step sort of thing. But um, every time that I've done it, <laughs> I've just gone until I ran out of yarn. And the only tricky part about doing that is making sure that you have enough to make it through the brioche sections. But I feel like it's a pretty easy thing to eyeball. Um, so I've kind of just, especially, I think this one I actually followed the yardage amounts, but every other one that I've knit, I've just sort of knit until I was about to run out of yarn. Um, so I really love that you can just keep going with it. The instructions are super clear and easy that way. So a great shawl. Hope it makes it into your repertoire as well, especially if you're looking to try uh, two color brioche. Speaking of two color brioche, the next pattern that I'm going to talk about is the only pattern in this collection that I have only knit once. Um, and I think you will understand why when I show you the finished outcome. This is the Sizzle Pop Shawl. It is two color brioche on the back side. And it's got this gorgeous motif. And the reason I've only knit one of these is because it takes a lot of concentration for me to get through this pattern. I love working on the pattern. Like it is addicting watching these motifs uh, spring up and getting through each row and because you have to knit each row twice for two color brioche you really get into this like rhythm with it um but the the skills are a little tricky um and i went straight from all about that brioche into this which was a bit of a leap in terms of like brioche skills i did cry a couple times trying to figure this one out but once i did the sense of accomplishment was amazing and I love the finished outcome. This is definitely one of my favorite knits of all time in my closet and it's one that I really really do want to knit again. I just haven't had enough time to like put aside to sit and concentrate on it. Um, especially because I've had some other lace knits this year or recently. Um, the baby blanket that I've been working on and the shawl that I knit for my friend's wedding, those take a lot of concentration for me. So I had those um, going. I have the baby blanket still going, so I just haven't had the time to sit down and really devote time to knitting another one of these. That said, I definitely want to knit at least two more, and I have some yarn on the way from Kate of Mezzo Makes to knit another one specifically. And I am super stoked. I'm excited. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm matching it up with a yarn that is in my stash. I keep looking over because my stash is directly behind the camera. Um, and I think this color combo is going to be a perfect match. And I'm so excited to show you. The new yarn cannot arrive soon enough. I am very excited. So if you are an adventurous knitter or you love two color brioche, highly recommend this. I love it. 
I love seeing all the co color combinations that people choose for it as well. I find it super inspiring. Um, yeah, it's just, it's such a sense of accomplishment and you get a really beautiful shawl out of it. I cannot recommend it enough. Okay, the last two patterns that I'm gonna talk about will come as no surprise if you've caught up with the other vlogs and if you follow me on Instagram. You probably already know what's coming. Here they are anyway. <laughs> Let's start off with the Paloma sweater. <laughs> this is a free pattern and I just love it. I mean, I did have to do some modifications on the numbers because the armhole was super, super deep. Um, if you want to check out those modifications, I have them listed on the project page on Ravelry um, and I'll link it below. Um, but I just, I love the fit like through the neck, the, the mock neck into the shoulder with those um, twisted rib shoulder details. It's just a beautiful fit and it works up pretty quickly. I think this has worked on four and a half millimeter needles and it's basically a DK weight um, where you can hold fingering and mohair together. Uh, so it works up pretty fast, I found. And yeah, I just love the shape. I love the fit. I love that it's a free pattern. Um, I've knit two of these already, this one for myself and then one was a gift knit. I have yarn on the way, it was a pre-order. So still waiting for that little email in my inbox to say that it's shipped, but I do have yarn on the way for a third Paloma sweater and I just keep coming up with colors that I want to knit this in. Um, so you will see many, many more of these over on Instagram. Go give me a follow if you would like to see that. <laughs> I, I just love this pattern. I love the sweater. The pattern is super easy to follow. Um, the instructions are very clear. And again, it's a free pattern. It's perfect. I mean, you can't go wrong. So yeah, go download your copy and knit a Paloma so we match. Twinsies. <sighs> I apologize. You guys are seeing my cheesiness come out. Like you really saw it in the last vlog episode and now it's coming out again in this episode. You know, I try to tone it down a little bit cause I know I'm a big cheese ball, but it's who I am. <laughs> So, okay, last pattern to talk about today. And again, this one will be no surprise. I'm gonna show you this one first. It's the Avero sweater. Um, this one is the one that I just finished, uh, just a refresher. I made a whole episode just focused on starting this project. It was a how much can I knit in a day kind of challenge. And it's finally finished, you will have seen um, finished object photos on Instagram by now, I believe if I've timed this correctly. Um, I love it so much, it turned out so great. Um, the original pattern though, I will show you my other sweater. <laughs> the original pattern calls for stripes. And I love it. I think the stripe placement is amazing. I love the V-neck on it. I've knit three of these, two for myself and one for my mother and it's just a great pattern. It's a great fit. Again, the instructions are super, super clear. And um, I love that you can choose to do the stripes or you can choose to knit it just one color and it looks just as good either way. Um, I've mentioned this before as well. I love where the V-neck sits on me. It's not too deep. It's not too high. Um, I feel like because my shoulders kind of slouch forward a little bit, I have very bad posture. I'm working on it. Um, but because my shoulders kind of slouch in, a lot of v-neck clothes tend to slip down and reveal a bit more of my chest than I am necessarily comfortable with. So I find the v-neck on this pattern just to be the perfect depth. And again, the instructions are super clear. It knits up pretty quickly. Um, this is definitely a sweater that I could see myself knitting again and again. I'm thinking like a black one with cream stripes would be really chic. So I might cast that on later, like maybe in the winter. Um, yeah, I just love 
love the shape, love the design, love the pattern. I have knit this three times, so it is firmly entrenched in my favorites, uh, in my knitting collection, I think, and I'm definitely planning on coming back to it again and again. I just, just love it. So that is everything. It was a pretty small collection of favorites, but I think the amount that I've knit each of these patterns really shows you how much I love the pattern and how much I love the finished objects as well. Um, I hope they inspire you to try them out yourself or inspire you to try out some new colorways. Um, if you do decide to try one out, let me know. Let me know what you think. If you have favorites that I've mentioned here, let me know. Leave a comment with your favorite pattern. I always love discovering patterns that people really love. You know, they're favorites for a reason. So leave your favorites down below so I can check them out as well. And yeah, thanks for uh, sitting here with me and going through all my favorites. I hope you enjoyed it and I will 